In this video, we're gonna talk about how two stores or franchises or retail chains are gonna jumpstart the recession. You know, I, I talked about the recession starting the end of this year, you know, going into the third quarter. It may actually, the recession may start the second quarter of this year and we will know end of July. But these two stores are going to jumpstart the recession, and I'm gonna to explain to you why they're gonna jumpstart the recession and what's going on. These two stores are Walmart and Target. Walmart is the largest employer in the United States. And Walmart and Target came out with their profit projections, which were so bad that both Walmart and Target stock crashed. Now, how did we get here? Let's go back to 2020 and let's go back to the stimulus phantom economy. With the stimulus phantom economy, we had propped up artificially induced demand. Now, what was that? A lot of things were going on in 2020. It was crazy um, and the government started printing money and issuing stimulus checks and handing out enhanced unemployment. I include the stimulus checks, the enhanced unemployment, the PPP loans, and the EDIL loans. So what they did was flood the economy with a lot of money. And what did the people who got this money do? They spent it. They stimulated the economy. But Here's the thing, and th this is kind of interesting. There was a restaurant that I used to go to during the stimulus economy, and the wait time, I, I would have to do, I would have to join a wait list before I left home because the wait times were like an hour, hour and a half. And lately, I don't, I could just walk in. I could drive over there and walk in. So what we had was this propped up artificially induced demand that was a radical departure from the real economy. So because the demand was so crazy, Walmart and Target ordered a bunch of things because Walmart and Target, and let, let's talk about Target. Target Target is very much a technology company. I know you see them as a retailer, but they're very much a technology company. Target has predictive, uh, predictive analysis software that can predict when a girl's gonna get pregnant based on the things that she buys. Uh, there was a story a few years ago where this man got upset because Target was sending his 16-year-old daughter prenatal vitamins based upon the things that she had bought. And later on, it turned out the girl was pregnant. So. The software, the algorithms that they use are very, 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 very sophisticated. They're very sophisticated. And they operate on real time data. There's no humans involved. So the software and the algorithm of Target and Walmart saw all of this demand come in and this crazy amount of spend and their profits were soaring. They were making money hand over fist. So these algorithms and software and systems ordered a ton of stuff, which is still sitting in Walmart's, Target's warehouses and on their shelves because the stimulus money has left the economy. So Target and Walmart may literally be sitting on two to three years of inventory. Now, why is this gonna jumpstart the recession? All right, I'm gonna share a story with you guys. When I was in the storage auction business, and this is on a very small scale, I ran a sale on Craigslist, eBay, and Amazon. Ran a big sale, plunged the price, and sold a bunch of stuff really quick. 
What I found out later that wasn't a good idea because what I had done was get people who would have bought from me in the future to buy today so my future sales didn't come. So this is kind of what happened with Walmart and Target because of this induced fake demand, their systems literally took over and ordered all of this stuff. So they're not going to be ordering from their vendors. So let's, let's go ahead and just look at the trickle down effect of having all of this inventory. First of all, their warehouses are full, which means that the number of new trucks coming in with delivering is going to dramatically drop. So they may cancel some contracts. They may cancel some pending orders with their suppliers. So Target and Walmart stop ordering stuff and they reduce what they're ordering. So the number of trucks, cause see Target and Walmart weren't the only ones who ramped up their supply chain. The trucking companies, uh, I was watching this trucker and uh, he was talking about how glad he was so that he had leased his trucks because he had ramped up for the Amazon demand and then it just literally overnight dropped. So Target, Walmart, Walmart, the largest employer in the United States, and I haven't Googled this, but I wouldn't be surprised if Walmart accounts for five, maybe 6% of GDP, which is huge for just one company. I wouldn't be shocked if it's that high, but I haven't Googled it, so fact check me on that. But so since Walmart and Target are going to have to adjust their ordering volume, everyone that's associated with Walmart and Target is going to also have to adjust their ordering volume and their supply chain systems. So what's going to happen is, let's say, just making it simple, Walmart had 100 trucks a day going to their warehouses, okay? And Target had 100 trucks. And let's say you go from 100 trucks to five trucks. 100 trucks to five trucks. That's a lot of pain in the supply chain. That's going to affect truck drivers. That's going to affect auxiliary warehouses. This is how Target and Walmart alone are going to jumpstart the recession. Cause you know, I've been talking to you guys about the recession and you know, based upon, cause the information, as I get new information, things change. And I was firmly predicting the recession to be December, in January. Uh, I'm revising those projections based upon this new information because it's so bad for Walmart, it's so bad for Target, their price, their, their stock price got crushed. Uh, I, I read that the Waltons lost like $20 billion. And this is going to be a long-term issue for Walmart and Target, which means it's going to be a long-term issue for everyone that's associated with Walmart and Target. And this is why Walmart and Target are gonna jumpstart the recession earlier than I predicted because first quarter results were dismal for Walmart and Target. And Walmart is huge. Target is huge. These two companies, because their predictive analysis software took this artificially induced demand and plugged it into their systems and they went crazy and they ordered all this stuff that's literally going to take them two to three years to sell and what they're going to have to do and remember everything that you need gas energy you know i'm talking about gas diesel electricity natural gas whatever you need in terms of energy electricity is going to go through the roof Food is gonna go through the roof. Gas for your car is gonna go through the roof. Things that you don't need, such as TVs, iPods, uh, Apple phones, you're gonna see a price reduction because this is gonna be the only way that they can move this stuff. So everything that you really need, energy, 
food, water, gas, it will be really expensive. Everything that you don't need, but you may want, is gonna be on sale. And this is gonna create a deflationary aspect of the economy. We're gonna have product deflation. Retail, Walmart, Target, Macy's, um, these malls. Retail has been in a recession for many, many years. It's about to get worse, and this is gonna to lead to layoffs, and this is gonna to lead to people. This is going to have, these, just these two companies are gonna have a huge impact on trucking. Once again, diesel is gonna to continue to go up, and a lot of people will be forced out of the trucking industry. If you're a trucker and you don't have really good credit and you don't have access to capital and your, your, your debt load is very manageable, you are pretty much on the chopping block for being out of business because diesel, I predict diesel is gonna get up to 10 bucks a gallon. And that's when we're gonna go through a doozy of a time. It'll probably be for three, maybe six months. You're gonna see stuff that you order online. It's just not gonna show up because they're not gonna be able to get it. Because let me explain. The other night I ordered a pizza, Domino's pizza. And then I got a call 10 minutes later from Domino's saying they had to cancel my order because they didn't have drivers. This was a huge problem. And I'm gonna do a whole video dedicated to that. But you're gonna have a bunch of people who are on the peripheral of low income or struggling. They're just simply gonna stop showing up to work. They're, not, they're just not gonna show up to work because it's virtually impossible to get fired today. You can clown, you can not come in, you can do, because it's just so hard to get workers at this moment in that low wage sector. This is once again, the low wage sector. You cannot pull this stuff as a $150,000 software engineer. I have a friend who makes $150,000 and she made a huge mistake and she got really close to getting fired. So, you can't do that on these 150, 200, 300, 400,000 dollar jobs. You cannot do that. Now, if she had gotten fired, she could have found a job the next day because of her industry. But right now, low wage workers, people who are barely making it, truck drivers, like if you're a truck driver and you've got a truck payment, a trailer payment, insurance, and you don't have any working capital, the first big expenditure, this could be about 20, 30, 40 thousand dollars. It could be something as simple as a tow. It's going to put you out of business. It's going to put you out of business. And what we're going to see at the end of the second quarter, because that's when I, you know, we're going to see GDP take a big dip because Walmart and Target have taken a huge hit because of the phantom stimulus economy. If you guys remember when I was talking about this, I said the CARES Act, and I was not with the CARES Act. And a lot of people said they gotta do something, they gotta. I feel that they did way too much for too many people that created this situation that we have. The CARES Act created the current situation that we had. The Repo Act, the printing of all this money, this has put us where we are today. And I felt if there was a more measured response, if they didn't do the EDL loan, the PPP loan, and the PPP loan, we're talking almost between the PPP loan, the EDL loan, and people getting unemployment, we're talking about like $500 billion in fraud. That meant a lot of people got money they didn't need. So I went on record, and uh, some of you may remember this talking about I wasn't, I did not take the PPP loan. And after I thought about it, because when it first came out, my business was doing really, really well. So I didn't have to take the PPP loan. I didn't have to take the, e, uh, the e, EDL loan. And then later on, when I realized what was happening, once again, as I get new information, new perspectives, I will change my mind. I'm not afraid to change my mind when presented with new information. And I was like, dang. This is a way for you to stimulate your own economy. So I did get the, I got $150,000 on the EDIL loan. I didn't need it. I just took the money because it was there. And I felt that's what a lot of people did. They just took the money because it was there. 
And once again, I felt that if they hadn't have done that, we wouldn't be where we are today. Because we would never had this artificially inflated demand to trip all of these companies ordering systems and algorithms. So the Target and Walmart algorithms were faked out. It was like a fake punt. They got caught slipping. They got caught slipping, sleeping. And just these two companies alone are going to jumpstart the recession. And what's happening is, as that, and this is what I mean, because these two companies, Walmart and Target, responsible for $700 billion, okay? $700 billion. And I feel that it's an underestimated. That is going to affect so many companies. There are companies that exclusively build their products and sell to Walmart and Target. They don't sell to no one else. These companies will be forced to lay people off. Trucking companies that have dedicated exclusive Target uh, contracts with Target and Walmart, they will be laying people off. And then these people who get laid off will not have money. So they will not be able to participate in the economy. So we can look at it and we can take that $700 billion uh, footprint that Walmart and Target makes and then we can 3X that. We can go to 2.1 trillion in damage that this is gonna cost. And this is why this is gonna jumpstart the recession because of all of the repercussions that are gonna happen with all of these other companies. And here's something that's weird. This is gonna be the first recession that we ever had where we're gonna have extremely low unemployment. Right now, there are so many jobs available in the low wage sector, and let's talk about that. During the pandemic, and this is something I talked about two years ago, you got people who got addicted to staying at home. Let's, let's take the average low wage worker. The average low wage worker who got the enhanced unemployment benefits made more money sitting at home, smoking weed, playing video games, having sex and goofing off than they ever made working. And I said, that's gonna be a problem in the future. You cannot, in the military, there's only so much leave that they will let you take because you will lose your military bearing. It's like two months. So you had these people sitting home month after month after month collecting these checks. They got used to it. Luxuries, once tasted, become necessities. So these people, like I said, I've noticed this a lot of times, a lot of rep times, restaurants will be closed. I'll go to DoorDash and look and they're closed because they don't have people who will come to work. Now, how are these people actually living in society? Look at who we're talking about. We're talking about the low wage worker, even when fully employed, did not make enough money to have their own place. They're living with mom and dad, or they're homosexuals, or they're shacking up four, five, six people to apartment, or they're living in a van. I mentioned this before, van life is going to explode during this global reset. You're gonna have so many people living in their vans, living in their cars, because that's the only way they can make it. It is literally gonna explode. I personally know people living in the van and living in their car right now. And these folks, this is part of the global reset. You will be reset. If you were living in a house, you may be reset to a rental or an apartment. If you were living in a rental or apartment, you may be reset to living in a van or a car. Like I said, uh, van life is just going to explode. It's going to explode. And during this global reset, the low wage worker, like I said, I'm probably going to do a whole dedicated video on that. The psychology, the psyche of the low wage worker has been co contaminated. What do you mean? It's like, I can live and exist without having to go to work. It's in their heads. I mean, 
with restaurants, it is restaurants are having a nightmare finding dependable people. And what's a dependable person? A dependable person is you hire them to come in five days a week and they actually show up and work five. That's hard to get right now. And during this global reset, there's a lot of people who are taking advantage of the situation. And in the future, these people will be, let me go ahead and tell you something that I just recently found out. I had a friend, an older friend, and we used to get into it all the time because he called me a money grubbing, you know, it's like, you're always focused on money. You should be focused on people and all this other stuff, right? This dude's about 80. And I just found out that he is living in his car. And we used to get into it because, you know, I used to keep a healthy number of dissenters around because, you know, I'm not afraid of being challenged, but it got to the point where the relationship became toxic and I just cut him off and I haven't talked to him in years. This man is 80 years old, living in his car with a dog. There are many of you who watch me and it's like, stop focusing on money. Concentrate on the people. Y'all are gonna be like that 80 year old dude living in his car with his dog. I know many of you don't like the reality of the world that we live in. I just recently restarted watching the House of Cards. And I love myself some Claire Underwood. I love myself some Claire Underwood. It was a scene where Francis was sleeping with Zoe, the reporter, and he comes in the next morning and she's like, oh, you were, the... she, she knew what he was doing. She was a realist and she had her own side piece. See, many of you are living in a state of delusion and many of you are chasing a fantasy because Money is extremely important. And many of you want to act like it's optional. Many of you want to act like this dude I know who's 80 years old living in this car with his dog. And many of you are going to get reset. I'm not going to try to convince you. If you want to stop talking about the money, man, let's talk, let's sit around and hold hands and sing Kumbaya and focus on the people. You do that if you want to. And I guarantee you, you're gonna be one of the first person that's gonna be globally reset. You're gonna be one of the first people that's gonna be globally reset. And I'm not gonna feel sorry for you because, you know, when I was growing up, we used to have this expression, a hard head makes a soft ass. And a lot of you have are hard headed. You just cannot convince you that you're wrong. You can't convince you that you need to exercise financial discipline. You cannot convince you. I know someone and I'm gonna tell her story. She got like half a million dollars inheritance and then she liquidated her 401k to get in real estate. She didn't know what she's doing. She lost all her money and she leases a car. And I have learned that when you try to instill sound principles to people who don't wanna hear you, you are just spitting in the wind. I'm like, you just went through all this stuff, you lost all this money, and you're leasing a car. I'm like, I just duck my head, close my mouth, and exist. So, you know, this is the, the doom and gloom channel. I told y'all this recession was coming. I told you that Bitcoin was gonna have a hard crash before it happened. And a lot of you just want to like, hey, you know, and this is what's funny. A lot of you are buying on the dip, right? A lot of you have bought on the dip and it dipped again. I know this is a long, long time ago, but we had a 10 year period, the Great Depression, where the stock market was down for 10 years. And many people don't think that's going to ever happen again. I feel that the global reset, the Great Reset, may bring that on again. So a lot of you who are loading up on the dip are gonna lose your money. Yes, I'm saying that because 
Do you understand that 67% of the technology companies don't make any money? DoorDash doesn't make any money. Uber doesn't make any money. 67 of these large tech companies are not making any money. It's almost like a giant Ponzi scheme. How long do you, cause see, this is why I feel that we're set to have a very long-term lull in the stock market. 67% of these companies are not making any money. They're being kept up by investors in the stock market. Would you knowingly give a hundred thousand, let's say you had a hundred thousand dollars, okay? And you have a friend that you're real close to, this is your boy, this is your girl, and you've known them since college, and you've known that they've been laid on every car payment, they've not paid their credit cards, and they have just done all types of financial fuckery, right? And you got, and they need a hundred thousand dollars, and they know you got a hundred thousand dollars. Are you gonna give them a hundred thousand dollars? Notice I said give, because it won't be a loan. You're gonna give them a hundred thousand dollars, or you're gonna say, no, nah, I can't do this. This is what's gonna happen. Mark my words, at some point, the stock market is gonna have a prolonged downturn, and people who are buying on the dip, they are gonna lose money. There are people who bought on the dip of Bitcoin. There are people who bought Bitcoin when it was $47,000. They've lost 17,000 if they sold. If they're holding on to it, the way that Bitcoin goes, there's a good chance at some point in the future it will get back to 67, 68,000. But I feel that Bitcoin is gonna take a bigger tumble. And I don't think this will be the end of Bitcoin because in Bitcoin has a fanatical code around it as many other cryptocurrencies have. So I don't think this will be the end of Bitcoin, but what we have right now is a great wealth transfer. And the poor people are gonna lose a lot of money because they're playing against the house. These hedge funds, do you know that some kings back in the day funded both sides of war? They funded the, the, the South and the North. Hedge their bets. This is who you are playing with. You're not playing with retail investors who are emotional. You're playing against billion dollar hedge funds that will spend $250,000 on an employee just to crunch. They got a room of dudes and do that. $250,000 a piece, maybe 20 or 30 of them in the room, crunching numbers. They're making decisions based upon math. They're not making decisions about, well, you know, it's gotta go up again. You know, Bitcoin can't crash. And this is what's funny. All of you who've been on me about my stance on cryptocurrency. Uh, I thought Bitcoin was supposed to not crash. Right now, there's a very close correlation between the stock market and Bitcoin. That wasn't supposed to happen. And if the stock market, which I'm predicting it will, has a long-term downturn, guess what's gonna happen to Bitcoin? So, you know, do what you want, you grown, do what you want, you grown, you're gonna do what you want. But just like my 80 year old friend living in this car with his dog, just like this chick that I know who lost 750,000 and I'm just sitting there like telling him, I told him, don't do what you're doing. And for some reason, they felt that I didn't know what I was talking about, for one reason or another. And the other day, the, um, the, the chick who lost the money, she's kind of pissed at me in a moment. And she said something like, um, that was deeply personal. And I didn't react. I've learned not to react. I was like, you're not having a good day, so I'm not gonna talk to you right now. You have a good night. And I just hung up the phone. And then, um, Her, her pet died, like the very next day. And it was crazy. And she calls me boohooing and all this other stuff. Cause see, one of the things I have learned is that once again, you, a hard head makes a soft ass. And you got people who will make mistake after mistake after mistake based upon how they 
feel versus practicality and math. And like my friend, 80 years old, living in this car, because uh, my friend who told me, who, who's known both of us for years was like, yeah, he's living in his car. Have you talked to him lately? I said, no. Uh, I said, I stopped talking to him because we used to get into these philosophical fights where he was talking about people. And this, let me go ahead and tell you, this, this guy has five kids, but he's living in his car. He has five children, five adult children, but he's living in his car. Mr. It's all about the people. See, we as parents don't understand that when we bring up our children a certain way, they become free agents. And a lot of children do not like their parents. They will not help their parents out. They will, like, uh, my, my business partner, Francine, who died, she had a really close family. And when she was going through it, her sister moved Francine into her house. That's family. And a lot of people are related, but they're not family. And I had a situation, and I'm gonna share this with you. I had a cousin that when I had a heart attack, my cousin came to see me, kind of looked after me, and she was like, well, if you need to relax, my cousin. So you can move in with us. And my cousin did not know how financially set I was, because you know, I didn't really put that information out. But you know, just like, hey, you can move in with us. You can get all the stress off you. You know, it's the farm. I know you're a city boy, but I think it'll be good for you. That did my heart so good. See, I don't have a lot of family, but the real family I do, they solid. See, I got somewhere I can go. I will never be living in my car at 80 years old. And I haven't been focusing on people. I've been focusing on money. And I got a question and put this in the comments. Why is someone who's been focusing on money has, and I, I actually, I have a few folks who kind of made that overture to me. You know why? Because I've been a real good friend. I've been a good friend for many, many years. So I don't focus on people I focus on being the best person I can be, and that's why I have these opportunities available to me, even though I focus on money. So many of you who wanna focus on community and focus on people, um, number 12, get ready to be reset, because the next 10 years are gonna be amazing for some people, and they're gonna be absolute hell for some people. You're gonna have people become trillionaires and you're gonna have people 80 years old living in their cars with their dogs. I was watching a special, I watched actually three specials on uh, YouTube today talking about the homeless problem. And you know what the biggest segment of the homeless population that's growing? People over the age of 55. These people don't have no retirements. They have no help. They don't have no family. 55, 65, 75, 80 years old, alone, living in their vehicle. Because see, you know, um, many people ha take issue with my lifestyle. Uh, I had a comment today, and I'm gonna tell you what I told this person. Oh my God, it's the person that's having relationships with teenagers. And I got a pre-written response to those folks. I was like, you're uneducated, uneducated, you're stupid, and welcome to the reset because a dumbass like you is gonna get reset because what proof do you have? You spend your time on BS and things that are meaningful and relevant, you ignore. Enjoy the reset, enjoy eating dog food in your old age. That's what I told them because if that's at the top of your attention span, something that happened in October, that's the top of your attention span? Your life must suck! If that's the top of your attention span, if that's what you, you're gonna come to my channel and leave that comment 
your life must suck. Because I ain't thinking about you losers. I'm not thinking about all you clowns who are going to get reset. And it was kind of funny. I did a video on Disruptive Mail talking about, I was thinking about suing these people. And in the same video, I said, it would be a waste of time, money, and effort to go after these broke people. In the same video. Then all of a sudden, all these videos talking about Glendon Cameron's going to sue me. My girlfriend said that these people have reading comprehension deficit. I said that in the same video and many people come in. I was like, I understand why you're not going after these losers. I said in the same video, see, there are people who like drama and this is why I've avoid drama. This is why, you know, Kevin Samuels, rest in peace. I'm not talking about Kevin Samuels. That's just drama. I'm talking about real and relevant things that impact your life. I avoid drama because I don't have to be entertained. I do find it kind of crazy the number of people who are coming out against Kevin Samuels who didn't say shit when he was alive. I find that interesting. Um, but, you know, I don't get into these topical, um, trendy, you know, I was watching the video where Faison was talking about Country Wayne ain't making this much money. And I'm just sitting there like, Faison is out of touch. Do you guys know that Facebook pays content creators more than YouTube does? I have a friend that has a cooking show. She made $4 million from Facebook last year. Country Wayne is way bigger than she is. Way bigger than she is. And she made $4 million last year. And this is what I'm talking about. People are spending time on BS and things that don't produce a return versus working on things to produce a return. Like this month, if you notice the content creation has slowed down, I've been focused on getting rid of these cars and um, I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. And then I got some other stuff that's coming up because um, I'm, I'm focusing on things that produce a return because I've been like that my whole life. Like, like I said, I love myself some Claire Underwood. Love myself some Claire Underwood. That's a wife. That's a partner. That's a wife. It's like, oh, you want to get you a little strange pussy? I don't care. As long as you keep me first. And see, the average woman is um, so possessive and jealous, and I'll be talking about this stuff on Disruptive Mail, that she cannot um, understand or put in proper perspective that if you spend 350 days with her and you spend 15 days with these other chicks, she got 90% of your time, she got 90% of your, uh-uh. That 15% is bigger than the 90%. And that's where so many people get a clouded perspective. Because my friend who's living in the car with his dog, he was so on this, you know, I, I'm not gonna be petty. I'm not gonna be a petty Patrick. Cause I would love to call him now. I would love to, I was like, I thought you were focusing on people. What happened, bruh? What happened? He used to tell me I was a money grubbing and I, all I, you know, I should be focusing on, and I was like, I'm gonna focus on what's important to me. And look at us now. And like, I'm here to tell you, there's a lot of you who are focusing on silly stuff focusing on crap. Like right now, Nick Saban and Jimbo Fisher are going at each other. And I find it amusing. And a lot of people are invested in that because Nick Saban is part of an institution and Jimbo Fisher isn't. See, Alabama in the next three or four years is gonna win another national championship. They don't, they don't, they just reload. I want you to think about that. They just reload. Right now, Alabama has not one, not two, but three former quarterbacks playing, starting in the NFL. They just reload. And Alabama is an institution. Long after Nick Saban is gone, it still will be an institution. And a lot of people don't understand that when you're building an institution, you're building something durable. 
they want to chase these false things. But once again, Walmart and Target just jump-started the recession. Let me know your thoughts and opinions, and I will see you guys in the next one.